My weird school. Fast facts. Space, humans, and farts. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pellot. Chapter fourteen: The Science of Grossness. Well, it's about time. Finally, I get to write this whole chapter by myself. Andrea and her snooty friends don't like it when I talk about pooping and peeing and farting. She thinks it's disgusting. But show me a kid who claims they don't poop, pee, or fart, and I'll show you a liar. So let's get started. It might be a good idea not to eat anything while you read this chapter. The science of farts. When you eat, the food gets broken down in your intestines by bacteria. Some of it is made into hydrogen sulfide gas, and that stuff smells like rotten eggs. P U, foods that have a lot of sulfur, like beans or cabbage, make it worse. So does broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and soda. Most people cut the cheese at least ten times a day. That's a half a quart of gas. Hey, we should find a way to use that gas to power cars and stuff. That would be cool. You could call them fart cars. Farting is nothing to be ashamed of. It's completely natural, and everybody does it. Your parents fart, even if they don't admit it. Your teacher farts. The Pope farts. Even Andrea farts. Are you finished, Arlo? This is disgusting. Almost. I'd just like to add that your farts smell worse than mine. What? That's not true. It is too. Females have more concentrated hydrogen sulfide in their bodies than males, so their farts smell worse. Go look it up if you don't believe me. You're impossible. The science of snot. Every time you take a breath of air through your nose, other stuff gets in there too: germs, dust, soot, bacteria. Yuck! Remember those little hairs inside your nose? They stop some of this stuff, but they can't stop it all. Luckily, we have this thing that lines the external cavities of the body called the mucous membrane. That would be a good name for a rock band, by the way. The mucous membranes. Anyway, the mucous membrane is constantly producing slimy stuff called mucus. Of course, it catches stuff like flypaper, and the next thing you know, it's time to do some major nose mining. Snot is just a form of mucus which lubricates and protects your body. I'm really sorry to tell you this, but every day you swallow about a quart of mucus. You're welcome. Isn't the human body wonderful? The science of burping. If you don't want to say burping, you can say eructation. That's what scientists call it. Let's say you eat a piece of pizza. You eat a piece of pizza. The bread, cheese, sauce, and toppings go down your throat and into your stomach, but something else makes its way down there too. Air. Air contains gases like nitrogen and oxygen. There's nothing wrong with that. The only problem is there isn't a whole lot of room in your stomach. Your body doesn't need the gases. So it gets rid of them. That's where burping comes in. The stomach squeezes itself, and the air is forced up and out of your esophagus, which is a tube that connects the back of the throat to your stomach. Burp. By the way, gorillas make a burping sound when they want to let other gorillas know they're not threatening. I can burp the whole alphabet, which is cool. If you want to make some really good burps, drink some soda first. It contains a gas 
called carbon dioxide that will really get you burping. But if you think burping is gross and disgusting, there are a few things you can do that will help you cut down on your burping. Stop using straws. Air gets inside them. Eat slower. Don't talk with your mouth full of food. And if those things don't work, here's a tip. Just turn some music up really loud so people can't hear you burp. The Science of Sweating Sweat is gross, but we have to do it because that's how our body cools itself off. It's like a natural air conditioner. Do you know what the sweatiest parts of your body are? Your feet. It's true. They have 250,000 sweat glands in them, and they produce about a cup of sweat a day. Yuck. Here's a good question to ask your parents. Why do people in really hot countries have such spicy food? The answer is that spicy food increases the activity of your sweat glands, and that cools down the body. The Science of Bad Breath When you wake up in the morning, do you have this horrible taste in your mouth? Yuck! Me too. I could brush my teeth for a million hundred hours before I go to sleep. But I'm still going to wake up with my mouth tasting like an old sneaker. Bad breath is so yucky that scientists don't even call it that. They call it halitosis. Why do we have it? The inside of your mouth is wet all the time, night and day. You're constantly producing saliva or spit. Mostly, saliva is made of water. But while you're sleeping, your mouth doesn't make as much saliva. Bacteria build up in there, millions of them. That's why you wake up with halitosis. The Science of Earwax How come scientists are always making up new words for stuff? Do you know what they call earwax? They call it cerumen. Earwax is made from sweat, oil, dirt, and dead skin. It protects the ear from substances like dirt and even insects. What? I have bugs in my ears? Help! Somebody call an ambulance! Our nurse at school, Mrs. Cooney, told us that we should never put anything into our ear, except our elbow. That makes no sense at all because you can't reach your ear with your elbow. And believe me, I tried. So, I found a solution to that problem. I put my elbow in my friend Ryan's ear. The Science of P You probably know what scientists call pee. They call it urine. Sometimes my dad sings an old song called Urine the Money. That's weird. I don't know what pee has to do with money. Pee is cool. Think about it. You drink a chocolate milkshake and it comes out yellow. You drink some purple grape juice and it comes out yellow. In fact, you drink anything that's any color and it comes out yellow. What's up with that? What happens is that when you eat or drink, your body can only use some of that stuff for energy. The rest is waste and we have to get rid of it. Our kidneys are these four-inch organs that sit in our upper abdominal area. They're shaped like kidney beans, so they have the perfect name. We have two of them, but one is enough to get the job done. While you're playing ball or walking your dog, the blood in your body is getting pumped through your kidneys. Basically, they wash it, filtering out things your body can't use. What's left is pee. Your kidneys wash 44 gallons of blood every day. They also balance fluids by getting rid of extra water. The stuff that makes pee yellow is a pigment called urochrome. The average person will produce up to two quarts of urine a day. Almost all of it is water. The rest is wastes, salts, and ammonia. I guess that's the stuff that makes it smell. So when you pee, aim carefully. 
The science of poop. I saved the worst for last. Poop. Oh no, here we go. Poop is part of life, Andrea. It's also gross. You can blame it all on eating. If we could figure out a way to stop eating, we'd figure out a way to stop pooping. As soon as you put a piece of food in your mouth, your body starts to attack it by chewing. Some of that food will be useful to build strong bones and muscles. Some of it won't. Your body wants to get rid of the useless stuff. Just seven seconds after you take a bite of something, that food is in your stomach. Over the next four hours, your stomach attacks it with acids to break it down. That food is already yucky, but it's not poopy yet. It needs to be pushed out of your stomach and into your small intestine. I don't know why they call it a small intestine, because it isn't small at all. It's over 20 feet long. Lucky for you, your small intestine is curdled up inside your body. It would be weird if it wasn't. Anyway, the small intestine is covered with these little things called villi. They look like tiny fingers. The villi go through all the yucky stuff that comes down the pipe and sorts it into fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. What's left after that goes into the large intestine? I don't know why they call it a large intestine, because it isn't large at all. It's only about five feet long, but it's much wider. Part of the large intestine is called the colon. It's not like the colon on your computer keyboard, completely different. If you had one of those colons on your keyboard, you'd want to clean it off right away. You might even want to get a new keyboard. Anyway, the colon absorbs any last water and minerals, and what's left after that is... Ta-da! Poop! Are you finished talking about poop, Arlo? Almost! The average adult produces about just under a pound of poop every day. You know what that means? It must be somebody's job to weigh poop. Yuck! I feel sorry for that guy. That's why you should go to college. If you don't, you might become a professional poop weigher. The Ending Are you finished talking about poop now, Arlo? Yes, but since you asked, here's one last fast fact for you. A dung beetle eats poop. It's also the world's strongest animal. It can pull more than a thousand times its own body weight. That's like a person pulling six double-decker buses. And we don't spend the whole day eating poop. Okay. Well, I can see you two have learned a lot about science. I still have more questions, Mr. Docker. That's great. I love questions. That's why I became a science teacher in the first place. Fired away. How can we believe anything Adams say if they make up everything? Huh? What? If there's a new moon every month, where does the old one go? I, uh, how can fish hold their breath for so long underwater? They don't, if corn oil is made from corn and olive oil is made from olives, where does baby oil come from? Wait, what? If you cry underwater, how does anybody know? I never thought about it. If bread is square, why is sandwich meat round? Oh dear, I'm sorry. Look at the time. I have a meeting to get to. How come grown-ups always have meetings to get to whenever I ask them questions? Don't go, Mr. Docker. I have more science questions to ask, too. We haven't even scratched the surface yet. Why would you want to scratch a surface? That could damage the surface. My mom told me that if I scratch the surface of the table in the dining room, I'm in big trouble. That's why we use placemats. I guess there's just too much science to fit in this book. 
If you can learn about the science of poop, you could learn about the science of anything. You could learn about the science of rocket ships, the science of dinosaurs, the science of fireworks. Hey, I just googled the science of fireworks. Did you know that there are no true blue fireworks? They still haven't found the right combination of chemicals to make a deep, bright blue when it explodes. I didn't know that. Me neither. Maybe we should have included a chapter fifteen. Science is really interesting. See what I mean? You should poke around, Arlo. Ask your parents to help you go online and search for stuff. You can also go to your local library and look for other books on subjects that interest you. Oh, Andrea said the B word. Yuck! Disgusting. I think I'm gonna throw up. Oh, stop it, Arlo! I know you love learning new things. Maybe we'll find out what color pumpkins are. Maybe I'll go windsurfing on Neptune. Maybe Adams will sit still and stop making everything up. Maybe Andrea will fix her broken hair. Maybe we'll use a lever to pick up the Earth. Maybe I'll cook a hundred thousand pieces of toast. Maybe racing cars will drive upside down on the ceiling. Maybe I'll get those drums removed from my ears. Maybe we'll find out where baby oil comes from. Maybe they'll open up some new restaurants for termites. Maybe Okapi will stop licking their own eyeballs. Maybe Henry washing machine will get credit for his invention. Maybe a dung beetle will pull a double decker bus. But it won't be easy. Afterward, the secret of the universe. Okay, are you ready to hear the secret of the universe? Are you on pins and needles? Well, you should really sit on a chair. It hurts to be on pins and needles. Okay, here goes. The secret to the universe isn't here. What did you really think I was going to tell you? The secret of the universe. I'm an eight-year-old kid. I barely even know how to tie my shoes. I've got news for you. Nobody knows the secret of the universe. Not even the smartest scientists. So go back to page one and read the book from start to finish. You just might learn something. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. Albert Einstein. I'm sure the universe is full of intelligent life. It's just been too intelligent to come here. Arthur C. Clarke. Basic research is what I am doing when I don't know what I'm doing. Werner von Braun. If we knew what it was we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? Albert Einstein. The good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. Neil deGrasse Tyson. My goal is simple. It is complete understanding of the universe, why it is as it is, and why it exists at all. Stephen Hawking. Life on Earth may be expensive, but it includes an annual free trip around the sun. Seen on a bumper sticker. The science of today is the technology of tomorrow. Edward Teller. The best way to have a good idea is to have a lot of ideas. Linus Pauling. Science never solves a problem without creating ten more. George Bernard Shaw. Science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and is the torch which illuminates the world. Louis Pasteur. It is better to know some of the questions than all of the answers. James Thurber. 
It is the same with people as it is with riding a bike. Only when moving can one comfortably maintain one's balance. Albert Einstein. Let both sides seek to invoke the wonders of science instead of its terrors. Together, let us explore the stars, conquer the deserts, eradicate disease, tap the ocean depths, and encourage the arts and commerce. President John F. Kennedy.